Thank you for watching the best barbecue show. I'm here at Sam's Barbecue with the owner, founder, and probably one of the most interesting guys in Austin, Brian Mays. How are you? All right. How y'all doing out there? Y'all doing all right out there? Yep. I think we're good, man. What's new with you, man? How's uh, how's barbecue on the east side? It's still getting it's getting better. Yeah? It's tell, getting real good. Tell they, me about it. They changed. Uh, they doing gentrification over here. Changed it, but they making it better for us. Yeah? Because a lot of people moving in town, they never heard of me. So now, everybody moving in town, they heard of me now. They doing good, you know what I'm saying? So they come visit me, and they like the barbecue. We ain't got no problem with them. And we all <laughs> going to be, we all trying to start unity up. Hell yeah. And once we get unity going, we're going to be all right. And with everybody. Unity with everybody. If you're in the neighborhood, we all got unity. We help each other. We look out for each other. We do things with each other. Well, you know? so you, uh, you've been here for how long? 46 years. 46 years. And how long has Sam's been here? Um, ever since about 62. Oh, and 60 something. I'm not sure. You know? And so uh, for all the people that don't know, tell us how, tell us about kind of where it started and how it became your well, it restaurant. It started with Sam Barbecue. It started with Sam. Sam Campbell, he was the owner of Sam Barbecue and everything like that. And then he got up, he started getting sick. And then his brother, AC, took over. And then my dad and AC were... He had a gambling match going, and he put it. He put Sam up, not the private, but the building Sam up. He put the building Sam up, and won that in the dice game. But then we had to buy the property, and so we bought the buildings and the property. Wow! All together back then, '76, '75, somewhere now. I mean, that's a that's a wild story for a restaurant. Right, right, right. And I've been here ever since. We've been here doing good. It was a little old bitty building right here. It was just a little bitty. All, I built all this other stuff. All that back, I built all that on there. It was a house at first. Oh, really? A four-bedroom house. Yeah, I, you, uh, last time I was here, you showed me around all the different uh, hallways right, and different parts happened. and everything. Right. Right. So, so it was, uh, you know, so we've been to everything we're doing. Just be consistent with what you're doing, you'll be all right. <laughs> you can't start it, stop, start it, stop, start it, start over, start over, start over. It ain't going to make it like that. Well, that's kind of the uh, that's the secret of barbecue, right? Consistency. You gotta be consistent in what you're doing. The same way you cook good, everything rub it down the same way, and see when you cook with love, you can't help but love it. So I cook with a whole lot of love. I rub it down, get the corner real good, make sure we season in and don't marinate overnight. They sit, everything soak in real good, and the next morning we put on that little roll. <laughs> yeah, I was watching you do some seasoning uh, just a second ago. What? Do you, uh, have you changed it up much? Has it been pretty much the same since the we beginning? Add, we add as we go. We don't take salt. We take salt out of it. We took salt out of barbecue. We don't use salt in our barbecue. No salt at all? No salt at all. Wow. People it's allergic to salt. Salt ain't good for you. High blood pressure. You too much salt. Yeah, it's too salty, all that. So we just take salt out. We never got to worry about that conversation. Well, and uh, the smoke and everything, it already gives it a lot of seasoning, right? Right. That's why we use oak and pecan wood, you know. And they got different oak. I got some black oak now. It's hard to find, but I found it. Really? Where'd you find that? In the country. Really? Yeah, in the country. So it'd be all right now. We're still cooking, smoking and joking. <laughs> you, yeah. uh, do you you get your wood from a, a friend out in the woods or what? Out in the wood, right. I got a friend out there. You know, he sell the wood. And uh, they cure it for you and everything, or you cure it here? No, he do everything we need for him. He cut it, he split it, he aged it for me and everything. Really? Mm -hmm. How much wood do you think you use on a normal day? I don't know, I bought two quarts. And I use that in, in 30 days or 35, 40 days, something like that. Every two months I got to buy wood. Wow. So I use about a quart a month. You know, But I cook, I got a big pick. I'm cooking every day. Yeah, you got a big pit. Right. 
Yeah, yeah. one of them old school brick pits. You don't I see much of those. I build it myself. No, you don't see that. I build it myself. So that was so, the the pit was built after you got the restaurant. It was a pit here, but it wasn't that pit. Oh, uh, okay. It was a little bitty pit. And you you decided it needed something bigger. Right. Cause you get big go red. You can't have no smaller and get bigger. Yeah. You gonna overload yourself. So if you cook big, you gonna you gonna make big things. And was it your design? I mean, I know that's more of the old school pits you would see back in the day. We got built the way it is. Cause I build what I need. I got double insulation. My pit ain't hot. My pit don't steam the whole room up. It don't do all that. I got mine built right. I double insulation mine. So it can keep all the heat on the inside. No heat on the outside. Your room ain't heated. Smoke go through. Everything flows right. Yeah, I mean, the, it's it's not too hot in there. And the there draw, you, you can yeah. see if you look at the fire for two seconds, the draw right. is crazy. Yeah, the draw pulling up through there. You got to yeah. insulate where to pull it to, number heat. And when it pull the heat, you, you cook it. All the way from the root to the tutor. Yeah, and most of these, uh, and most of the spots, you see someone uh, open up the firebox, the smoke comes into the room. Right. Mine don't do that. Doesn't do it at all. It's like a vacuum. I got a vacuum. My double insulation is so good. I made sure I got it sucking right. So it won't be clogged up or nothing like that. It's getting good. But the older you go, and the longer you stay in your bin, the more you're going to learn. And the more you learn, one day you're going to be real, real good. Because you know what to do now, and then you know what not to do. You know what to use, you know what not to use. Well, and, you know, uh, a lot of people that listen to the show own businesses, own, you know, they, they own barbecue joints. So right. any any wisdom you have, you know, a lot of people would love to keep their restaurant open 40, 50, 60 years. Well, you got to stay consistent at it. Make people happy. Make people want to come back and visit you. Make sure you got good food. You know, you'll be all right. Well, well you got good food, people going to come visit you. And people have to know you, too, now. If people don't hear you, they're not coming visiting you because they don't know you. I've been here 46 years. Everybody know me. Yeah. I do movies. I got movies out. I got commercials out. I got books out. I got everything out. So people really don't know me. They think they know me. They really don't know me. They know of me, but I got, I mean, when you get off in my life, you say I got six movies out. Me and Al Pacino. Me and Kevin Spacey. Me and uh, uh, Nicholas Cage. We all got movies out. You know, so me and Richard Linkletter, that's what I'm talking about. Me and uh, uh, Mike Myers and Halloween Mob movie. Really? We doing all this right. Yeah, last time I was here, you showed me uh, when you were on a, they, they played a Red prank Carpet. on you. Yeah, on uh, the J. J. Kennedy show. Yeah, on the Jamie I'm Kennedy on that, show. I'm on the Jamie Kennedy show, too. All that, you know, get built on all that. All that works. So I'm doing a whole lot of things in the last 46 years now. Hey, you're a busy man. Right, with 18 kids, 46 grandkids, six ex wife two lawyers and three doctors. Very busy. <laughs> in a business. Yeah. Very busy, but for real. And I'm 68 years old, so. Well, I love how the, every time I come here, there's people, even before you open, you got friends stopping by, right, everybody making snacks, by. everyone's hanging out. Yeah, everybody comes to hang out spot. And then everybody stay out of town. Everybody stay in Pflugerville, Round Rock, Georgetown, you no know, Huddle, St. Marcus, Maynard. So when they come to Austin, you know where to go but Sam. So we go to Sam, eat, we can hang out, we can have a daiquiri, we can talk, we can have fun up at Sam. Well, and it's cool how you've always been so welcoming. You know, a lot of people don't like to see Austin changing, but you seem happy about it. I am. A change is a good move for everybody. Everybody should change one day in your life. You don't want to be a boy all your life. You got to change be a man one day. You got to make a change in your life one day. One day you got to make a change in your life. You got to stop being a boy and grow and be a man. That's a change. You can't be a single man. You got to get married and have your family. That's a change. Now you become a father, and now that's a change. Now you become a grandfather, that's a change. We're going to have a change in our life. And we got to be ready for all changes. All change we got to be ready for, we got to make our right decision when we make a change. You know, so we're all right. They gave me, they gave me, they bought my half from me. I didn't want to sell my half, but I didn't pay for 9000 for it. I remodeled it and built it real big. 
I put nine thousand. They gave me a half million for it. So I'm out of here. <laughs> I moved from this side. So I'm building my new house in the country at that Buda. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm moving to Buda now, so I'm trying to give me a barbecue place out there. Nice. Yeah. And a daiquiri factory. I'm probably put a sound barbecue out there in Buda with sound with a barbecue daiquiri next to it, right there with together, the same building. I got two buildings in one building. Can't beat that. Yeah, Valentina's is moving out there too. It's about to be the the Buda's going to be this own barbecue destination. Right. So Sam coming up, they know it's going to be all right. <laughs> so you know if Sam coming, everybody got to look at oh, Sam in here. <laughs> Hell yeah. You don't need no teeth out there. When you come to Sam, you don't need no teeth. He did be. And I'm building another pit just like that. Same way and, and everything. What's the, uh, you got a timeline on that? Well, in about the next five years. I should have it rolling and back going. Yeah, no rush, right? No, you don't rush thing. You take your time and do it, so you won't make no mistake. Every time you rush thing, you gonna make a mistake somewhere. And then when you make a mistake, I start all over again. And then you holler, uh oh, my fault. We don't need that. No. We don't need that. Especially when you come with man. You don't need no uh oh, ooh uh, ooh, my fault. Excuse me. I ain't gonna do it no more. That's children talk. A man told we getting a deal. And how you get a deal, be careful what you do. Take time out. Don't be in a rush. Take time and have your plan out and plan it from the beginning to the end. And then stay with it. If it takes you 30 years to get to the end, at least you there. At least you stuck with your plan. At least you have a bunch of money. At least you be in a good situation. At least your kids be grown. Happens fast, huh? Yeah, fifty years go by. How old are you now? Me? Thirty-nine. Oh yeah. Thirty years went by fast, didn't it? Yeah. See what I'm saying? So that thing how fast fifty gonna get here? Go, you almost at fifty now. Another ten, eleven year, you be fifty. Yeah. You know that ten years gonna go by fast. If thirty came by fast. You know fifty gonna, that ten gonna go by real fast. And you think uh, you think part of it is the part of owning the restaurant is coming in and being able to kind of be here every consistent, day? Consistent. Consistent. Make sure everybody's happy every day. And you got to do things in your life to keep you getting up every morning by doing the right thing, exercise, work out. You ain't got to drink. You ain't got to do drugs. You ain't got to do all that. If you want to smoke some marijuana, smoke some marijuana. You could. But you ain't got to do them pills, driving all that old stuff, ice and all that stuff. You don't need all that. Yeah. It don't make it, it get key in the long run. Well, I'm sure, I, I mean, with marijuana, you've seen it change. It's almost legal oh, yeah, at this legal point. It is legal. Everybody smoke marijuana. Everybody smoke marijuana. So if my will going to make They're not taking it deal with a little bag of weed. Yeah, not, not in Austin. Not in Austin, enough. Well, but you try to have a whole lot of your airline in that way. If you try to have 18, 19, 20, 40, 50 pounds of marijuana, shame on you. You don't need yeah. that much. Who needs that much? You don't need that much. Get a little bit and I don't bet you been. So when you, when you eat some good barbecue at Sam, you're going to have your good daiquiri, and you're going to eat some good barbecue. And you don't need no teeth. So all your dentures, you can take her out and come on in. You still enjoy <laughs> yourself, baby. Well, so, you know, you've seen uh, you've seen the city change so much. Uh, I, I mean, even the other day, there was a... There were some guys who used your sign for their, their album cover. You right, remember that? Right, right. They changed the name on it. But they paid me for it, though. Yeah, so. I they think, took care of it. They took care of that problem. Yeah. They did. They know they made a mistake. Yeah. It wasn't no problem. It wasn't no arguing, fuss and fight, and I'm going to sue you. It wasn't none of that. Yeah. You recognize what you did, and you finally you straightened it up, and you straightened it up. I'm happy. What you paid me, I'm happy with it. Well, and, uh, you know, when I heard about it, I knew that, you know, from talking to you, I knew that it wasn't going to be, you know, the outrage from other people was a lot more than probably it was. you. Everybody was outraged. Everybody was mad. Everybody trying to do this. But I wasn't mad. Nah. I talked to them. I talked to their lawyer. And we said, we got to understand it. Understand beat everything. And me and the lawyer got to understand the band apologize. And we're all happy now. They probably come and eat here whenever they're in town. They probably come eat when they're in town. I ain't mad at them. Yeah. See, you don't get mad at your people. You love them and appreciate them. And sometimes you got to learn how to forgive folks. Absolutely. See, a whole lot of people don't know about forgiving. 
So I learned forgiving. And I like forgiving now. But everybody don't know about forgiving. It's hard to forgive. Because all when a man do something to you, a person do something, somebody do something to you, it's hard to forgive them. But we got to learn forgiving. That's how we move on. By forgiving and taking all that load off your shoulder. You don't want that load on your shoulder. So what you got to do? You got to forgive people and move on. And then once you do it, it's like cooking. Once you're cooking, once you cook, you got everything, everybody happy, you don't satisfy me, everybody happy that day you did a good job. Yeah, and I mean, I can't imagine how much forgiving you've done in your life. A whole lot, Bo. I got 18 kids. A whole lot. I, should, I didn't learn now. I didn't learn how to forgive. I ain't learned yesterday, but I learned up in age. Because I didn't know about forgiving when I was young coming up. I should have forgave my fair wife. But I didn't I didn't know about forgiving. I'm sorry I didn't know. Yeah. But see by me not forgiving, I got in a whole lot more trouble. Because I forgave my fair wife, I had number two kids. But I ain't didn't forgive, I got eighteen. That's good. Yeah. I got twelve girls and six boys, that's good. But it was a situation I I didn't have to go to. But I went to it because I didn't know about forgiveness. But see, once I learned forgiveness, I don't go through the situation no more. I just forgive and move on. And once you forgive and move on, you'll be all right, bro. In your life, you're happy. You ain't got no load on your back. You no know, stress, no nothing. We heard ourselves about stress. You can't even cook barbecue if you stress every morning. You got to let it go. You got to let it go. And focus on what you're doing. I've been cooking barbecue for a long time, but I'm focused on what I'm doing. Yeah, I done done wrong, yes. I've been a penitentiary, yes. I've been punished, yes. But I ask for forgiveness for all my wrongs, though. And we have a forgiving God. But God told me if I forgive you for all your wrongs, Brian, you got to learn how to forgive people for their wrong too now. And I had to learn that. When people do something to me, I got to learn how to forgive them. I got to learn how to forgive everybody. And forgiving is a big part of life now, too, now. But grandma forgive, daddy don't. Daddy punish you. Grandpa punish you. Mama forgive you and grandma forgive you. But papa and daddy gonna punish you. They gonna keep you in order. Sometimes they whoop you. Sometimes get a spanking. But grandma always gonna love you all the time. Don't my love harder than grandma. Oh, yeah. Grandma is the best woman in the world, everybody. And whoever listens to this and know your grandma, I promise you love her. Everybody love grandma. Well, and, and you have, just your family, you have so much community, but you have, you have this whole community in Austin. Is it weird to see it kind of moving further and further out? Well, I can understand it. Because I done moved out, too. I moved out because they paid me to move. Yeah. They paying everybody to move out. So when you pay 18000 for a house or when they give you 300000 for it, you did good. Yeah. See, over here on the east side, where the cheaper property was, on this side of 35, where the cheaper property was. But everybody didn't want to move over here. Everybody wanted to move on the other side of 35, west and all that. But now, it's see it's cheap over here, they want to move over here now. But you're buying, yeah, I sold mine for 500000 I had paid nine thousand for it, yeah. Well, Everybody did that. I Everybody mean, over here doing that. They all made me for this. I turned eight million dollars down. Smart. Yeah, how many people do that? Everybody can't just turn eight million dollars down. Two months ago, Dorb Development offered me eight million dollars. And I turned it down. I know it was in the newspaper. Right. I mean, it, they off me. Developer people off me. They want to buy my spot. Off me eight million. Everybody don't turn that eight million dollar ball. But when you own something and you have something, this I made through the COVID nineteen because I own my building. See, a lot of people couldn't. They couldn't make it through because they didn't have no. You know, it was closing down. People weren't coming out. Nobody wasn't making no money. Yeah, I had a hard time too, but I own my business. I still made it. Yeah. 
I still made it, but I'm saying that, but yeah. It's hard, but when you own stuff, you're all right. That's how we lost all our business. It was, it was 500 black business over here. 500 black businesses. And, it, and everybody is shutting down. Why? Because everybody didn't own a business. They rent. And when you lease up, they're not releasing you. Yeah, they'll double the rent or something. Right. So when you lease up, everybody double your rent. And then you can't afford it no more. They're not remodeling the building. So what they do, they take and sell it. You got to go start all over again. Well, I mean, if you've watched, you know, this was this was a much more dangerous intersection right here at 12th and Chacon. It used to be. It used to be. Right. There was a whole lot of folks around out here. Danger. What was it like back then? It was, selling barbecue. It was, I stayed crowded. I used to open all night. I used to open 24 hours a day. For about some years, at least about 10, 15 years, from 76 to uh, about 2000. Really? I started shutting down. Because we started at, we stayed with 24 hours. Well, and we started shutting down like 4 in the morning or 5 in the morning. And then went to 2 in the morning. And then went to 12 in the morning, at midnight. And then there were 10 at 10 midnight. That would be fun to come here at 3 in the morning, 4 in the morning, get some food. That's what it was. Everybody come off 6th Street, pack, pack. Long line, way down the street, right the corner. <laughs> Every night, cold party and all night. And then 12th Street stayed open all night. See, 12th Street don't sell one all night no more. Right, yeah. They closed it down. So when they closed down, everything started shutting down. Oh, in 2009, when I first moved here, I I I had to like wait for people. There was a crowd of people partying in the intersection. I had to right. wait everywhere. for them to get out of the way. Everywhere, for and everywhere, all down to the street, packed. They had prostitutes, drug dealers, drug users, everything out here. Clubs open all night, but now, you know. All that killing everybody kept doing, the police already warned you, the city already warned you, keep all that killing up, we're going to shut everything down. Black Street, 6th Street was all black. They shut 6th Street down, everybody getting killed on 6th Street. And then 11th Street, they had punk, prostitutes, everything up there, gay folk, everybody up there. Dope dealers, everything, they start killing up there. They start killing them homosexuals, faggots, they start killing them. They shut that down. And then they start killing on, we had nine kids in one year. They start shutting the whole thing down. Then they shut down. Then they read back open. Then they open it back up. See, then they won't give black folk no license no more. Like business license or what? Yeah, alcohol license, like run a club or stuff like that. Really? White folk can get black folk can't get them no more. They just turn down. <clears throat> they don't say you can't get them. They say... They're not available for you now. But I bet you know some people from living in the city for so long. People in the city, people at TABC, you know? Oh, yeah, I know everybody. I know TABC. I know the health department. I know all of them. I know the one retired. They tried to put a trick on me. Police all trying to put a trick on me. Yeah? Yeah, they wasn't, They come to me with a police officer. Tell me he had some bridge for sale. But the man said he worked on a truck to sell meat. It ain't getting lost, sell meat off your truck. So that man said he got some brisket that he sell that in his ice box that he, he don't want to let it go bad. They want to do a party, but they cancel the party, but I got all this meat, I can't have it. So I said it to you. But I bought the meat. Cheap as hell, seeing meat down there, everything. But what I did, I cooked it for my birthday party, not to sell him. Gotcha. And I did again. He kept bringing it back. Ten brisket, ten rib for a hundred dollars. Fuck you! I'm getting it. I don't care what the police <laughs> said. I don't care what the police said. I got it. Yes, I did. Because it's a good deal for me. Yeah. I used my daddy's birthday. Now my dad got a birthday. I used for his birthday party. He had over four hundred some people there. And I can buy all this meat for a hundred dollars. 
I don't care what the police said, I bought it. And I told them I bought it. But how can I, y'all saying I'm buying stolen meat. How can I buy stolen meat? I'm buying it from a police officer. How long ago was that? 2010. They tried to get you in trouble? They tried. That shit don't work. You got to be real with me. If you're going to get me in trouble, let me do something. <laughs> you can't have me do nothing put me in trouble. You can't come to me and tell me that meat is, is I had in my story. You ain't never told me it's stolen. I asked you what it's stolen. You said no. You said no, it wasn't stolen. If you got me on tape, you got me on stage, is this meat stolen? If you got me on tape and saying no, it's not stolen. I got a story where I was going to do a party, but I couldn't use the meat. I can use the meat, yeah. They give me $130 for all this. I gave hundred thirty dollars. Come find out, y'all come in tell me I'm buying stolen meat. Who I'm buying stolen meat for? So I go down to police station, I'm buying stolen meat from the man that you buying. He a police officer. Why the fuck can I buy? Then like the pol like the judge say, they did what? See, they didn't tell you they set me up. They didn't tell you they had a man come to me with some meat and say it's it's not stolen, but it's stolen. Recorded, play it. So when they told the judge what happened, the judge told me, man, you free to go. Because I ain't did nothing wrong. Y'all trying to set me up. Y'all had the health department come and take my license. You and the health department, police and the health department come here at the same time. So y'all had this shit planned. How can y'all two show up at the same goddamn time if y'all had it planned? And who the hell said me that me? A police officer? Oh, you work for the police department. Also, oh, y'all set me up. Y'all trying to set me up. Been made. Did you cook at me and said it? No, I didn't. I used my birthday party, my dad's birthday party. It's not against the law. So they let me go. I mean, with the prices of meat now, you're going to have to steal it. Wait, well, I don't steal. No, I know. I'm just kidding. It's I just... don't steal. Yeah, we don't pay gang because they're going to think we lying and telling the truth on that. We don't do that. <laughs> we, uh -huh. we be truthful all the way through. But the brisket prices are getting crazy right now, huh? All of them getting crazy. But you got you got to go up on your prices. They go up, you got to go up. I really don't want to go up on my people, but I got to. You think that's one of the hardest things, owning a business, having to raise your prices? Right. Especially when all your people love your prices, you got. I got cheap prices in town. I'm going to go up on my two meat, my special $15. I'm going to go up to at least $17 on my special. It's still under twenty dollars, but you know. Yeah. Still a lot of food for twenty dollars. Right. It is. I might go up on it. They going up on me. They went up on my sauce. Yeah. How you get two pounds sauce for hundred six dollars? They call me two fifteen. Who makes your sausage? Up street or uh, Texas meat? Tex huh? Yeah. Texas sausage company. The Texas sausage company they make my meat. Yeah. You like them? Yeah, we're all right. I've been with them for 40 years. Yeah, I bet. They're, they're the OGs. Right, but they're a bad, but they got owners that chain that mess everything up. It's hard, man. It's hard running a business. It is hard running a business. You got to be friendly to everybody. You can't argue and fuss with them. You can't do all that. You got to be nice to everybody. Well, it's uh, like you said, it's forgiveness. Even if someone's mean in the moment, you got to yeah, just you gotta, let it go. You got to let it go. Everybody got to learn forgiveness, though. Everybody ain't been taught forgiveness. Who, who taught you forgiveness? I had to learn it. I had to ask God for forgiveness. And when God asked me, I asked God for forgiveness. He said, I learned how to forgive people, forgive people myself too now. If you want me to forgive you, you got to learn how to forgive people too now. That's how I learned. Well, forgiving yourself is the hardest thing, right? No, forgiving other folks is the hardest thing. If I ask God to forgive me, but God want me to learn how to forgive other people that do things to you. You cannot hold no grudges. Well, that's probably how you got so many friends. That's why I got so many friends. I don't hold grudges, boss. For and what? I, and I'm sure people have tested you all your whole life. All my life. People steal from me, say they're my friend. Breaking your house, say they're your friend. I don't kill them. 
I just forgive them. Don't do it. Don't mess with them no more. Well, I mean, it's you can feel the love when you come here, man. There's there's always people hanging out. There's always people excited to see. You. There's always people right. sticking their head, yelling in the back. Everyone knows always, everybody. Yeah, yeah. we no problem. It's we no problem. Everybody friends up here. We all got we all friends. That's how we got to get along, boss. We got to be a unity some way. And how you start a unit and be a unit, we got to start from speaking. How you doing? And then they add from now. Now you know each other. Y'all speak to each other every day. Some people ain't you speaking. Some people out in New York don't even speak to you. Yeah, I'm a big proponent of uh, of smiling and talking to people. That's what uh, we're losing that a little bit in Austin. I'm trying to get it back. We, we got everybody right. We need it back. Yeah. That's how we stay friends. That's how we got everything going by unity. And, and be a unity, got to be friends. At least speak. How you doing? You doing all right? Fine. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. We got to learn how to do certain things in life. And once we learn, it's going to be all right. But we always got to learn one thing. It starts with forgiveness. You can use the barbecue, get full, go home, relax. Then you'll be all right. You ain't gonna have no problem, no situation, no nothing. Why do you think people in barbecue are so cool? Well, everybody not cool in barbecue. But a lot of people are. A whole lot of them, a whole lot of them are. But you got a whole lot of people not too now. Now people in business and barbecue, they doing pretty good. They got good attitude. The one I met. Yeah. The worker. I ain't met the owner yet. You know, because I don't know. I'd have been every barbecue place in Austin. Or in small Lockhart, Elgin, Luland, wherever. Maino, Gideon, wherever. Wherever they got barbecue, I'd have been there. What, you got uh, you got places you like to visit? You got some favorite people in the barbecue world? Well, I just go see how good they are. I go see if you're doing what I'm doing. I don't think anyone's doing what you're doing, Brian. They not. I can see it. People don't wrap their food up. See, when I wrap my food up in fall, I got it on the pit, I'm cooking, I wrap it up, it's getting tender. Can't none of these mess with it. Can't no flies are getting on it. Can't, you can't, if you drop, you can pick back up. You can do all that because you got everything wrapped up and protected. See, the main thing, protect your food so you can sell it. You don't want to have no burn up food. I ain't paying no ten to your food. Where where did you uh is that a method you developed or when someone you taught learn you? That. I learned as you go. You gotta pay attention to everything you do. Well some people call the rap in the Texas crutch. You heard that before? Not really. But that ain't what it is. It's not. It's just the right way. It's the right way. How much uh how much brisket and stuff are you cooking lately? I just did twelve today. And 12 real. And I just seasoned 50 pieces of chicken. Nice. And yeah, I saw that big bucket of chicken. That yeah. That looked good. And I got um, sausage on. I got 25 pounds of sausage on there. Is that like a spicy or a... It's mild. Mild? You don't have spice food. Everybody don't eat spice food. If you got a spice food, you got certain people come visit you. If you got food where everybody can eat, everybody come to eat. If you want a spice, you can make a spice if you want it. Is that a beef, pork mix? I got beef, pork mix, sausage. I got pork ribs, St. Louis pork ribs. I got chicken. They don't sell lamb no more, so it's hard me getting much. Really? Right. So I'm going to have to substitute turkey for mud. I'm going to have to serve some, serve two, some now. Turkey's popular. You, you heard of that turkey leg hut in Houston? Right. That's in Houston. Yeah. Those guys are... Those they guys making are, money, yeah. They're making a killing just selling turkey legs. Right. They said tur- more than turkey leg now. They got oh, turkey yeah. leg stuff. They got stuffed turkey leg. They got a whole... The whole turkey leg is a big plate. Right. And you stuff it. Yeah. It's With a party. different thing, yeah. It's a party, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and you got... I mean... You got... Famous people's headshots. You got bands. You got so many people that'll come through here. Right. 
You uh, you got any favorite stories? Uh, when Steve Ray Vaughan is the home, it's the home of Steve Ray Vaughan here. Yeah. So him, my mama, when Steve, my mama adopts Steve Ray by blood, not by blood, by love. Uh, Steve Ray Vaughan, my mama, they why they got pictures together. My mama got pictures with Steve Ray Vaughan and everything, got a real friend, a real close. And Steve liked my mother. Excuse me. So mm -hmm. Steve liked my mother, so we become brothers. Not by blood, but by love. Hell yeah. You know, so that's why we, that's how he been with us so long. That's why he talk about Sam Barbecue so much. You know, mama sent him ribs while he in New York, videoing. He called my mama, she sent him ribs up there. They're going to Stevie up there. So, everybody loves Stevie. I got pictures of Stevie everything. Did you go see him play music all the time? Well, I was, I was young. And I was locked up in prison for 10 years, too. So, it was hard for me to do that. In the time he was playing. Yeah. Because I knew him 80. I knew him like in 90, 81. I knew him like in 81, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 85, 86, 87. But I went to prison in 88. Till 98? I said I went to prison in 88. Right. For 10 years? For 10 years, right. Wow. Who ran, Who was running the restaurant the whole my time? My dad and my mama, my sister now. But they yeah. all dead now. But I lost 10 people in 2010. It's, must That must have been some good barbecue when you came back in 1998, huh? Well, yeah. It was packed. It was still packed. Been still going on. My daddy got rich while I was gone in prison. While I was gone 10 years, he made over 100. He, he saved over a million dollars. Really? So they were running everything. Mm -hmm. Bigger the team, bigger the dream. You got a big team, man. And a big dream, bro. Yeah. Right. And you're, it, it's I cool. I got my grandbaby with me now. I got my older grandbaby. They run the Dak factory over there. My grandbaby and daughter run the Dak factory over here next door. So I got three or four grandbabies over there, grown, running over there. All my big grandbabies over here working. They're all over 25, so I ain't mad at them. Yeah. How late do you all end up going every day? From the deck pack from 12 to 10. And Sam is from 10 to 10 on Friday and Saturday. On Sunday through Thursday, the deck pack and Sam close at 8 o'clock at night. So you're cooking all day? All day. I'm cooking now all day. You see me cooking now? Yeah, I saw you. You see me just cooking. Cook. I have all this stuff ready by 6 this evening. So I gotta go to work. Uh, and you got David back there helping you right now. Yeah, my baby brother, right? That's your baby brother, right? Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, y'all work together good. Mm -hmm. They gotta do what I say do though. <laughs> I got to pay you. Well, you gotta. Someone's gotta make decisions, right? Somebody gotta make. They give it in right state of mind though. You gotta be in right state of mind, make a good decision. You can't have your mind all messed up trying to make no decision for me. Yeah. It ain't going to work. Like you said, you got to clear your head. Yeah, you, you, you got to have a clear head, bro. You got to. To make it. You can't keep chaining over. I changed six times in life. Messed up. Worst thing I ever did in my life. Keep starting over, starting over, starting over, starting over, starting over. You can't get the motherfucker right yet? You can't get it right there. You study start no. You gotta be a dummy. So I had learned how to be a dummy no more. Now I got me one wife, I ain't starting over no more. Oh no more. Whatever it is, we're gonna work it through it. It's forgiveness now with me. See now I know how to forgive now. I ain't gotta get mad all with you and fight you and do this. If you do something you ain't gonna be just forgive you and move on, bro. You ain't got to fight. If your wife mess with another man, you know, it ain't gonna hurt. Just forgive him and move on, bro. You ain't got to raise hair and go hurt that man or do all that stuff and he ain't go to prison. You ain't got to do that. You ain't gonna hurt. But move on. 
don't pack it on you. Don't pack the load on your shoulder. It's going to weigh you down. Because you're going to be getting mad every day because you got it on your shoulder. Let it go. And move on. So it won't hurt. Yeah, it, lighten up. You got to lighten up, out. You got to get that, get that load off your shoulder. And then when you do that, you start, you be good. Stay in your business. Stay working. Stay focused on barbecue. Stay focused on cooking barbecue. Stay focused on selling and making people happy up here. Don't come to work mad at everybody because you mad at home. I, I think it's incredible the way you embrace change. Every time I talk to you, you're just, you're rolling with it. You're, you're making things happen. Right. It's smart. I'm doing a good thing now. I got the good Lord on my side. As long as you got the good Lord on your side and you, in you and you love him to death, you'll be all right. But don't get the devil mixed up because you know the devil is a God too now. You, uh, I mean, you get a lot of church folk, right? Is there one church that comes here oh, the you most? Love me. Yeah, I got, I got, I got a uh, person that asks church folks. And if they can ask, we can sit down and talk. If they don't, I got to explain to you. And I asked everybody in the world about the grandmother of Jesus Christ. Do anybody know the grandma of Jesus Christ? Most people don't know. Do you know? No. I know most people don't know. But they don't know the grandma is a very important person in, in, in a person's life. Grandmas are the best. You got that right. So why people don't know the grandma? Lost in history, I guess. It ain't lost. They took out the Bible because she told the truth. The grandma tell the truth all the time. She don't lie. They took grandma out the Bible because she told the truth. The grandma said, my daughter ain't gave no man no permission to be pregnant. So how could this be? So grandma went to her knees and said, Father, if it's your will, let it be. And when she got up her knee, get what grandma said when she got up her knee. She said, this is God, child. Is there a church? I know there's a lot of churches closing down. Oh, everything. And then anybody getting hurt. Is there, is, are there still churches in the neighborhood behind you? Well, ain't there. But they're not always behind me because they don't do it like that. Church represent they sell. Church got each other back in church. But, you know, I'm still making it. Yeah. You know, I'm depending on the... the change. I'm depending on the gentrification change. I mean, I'm, I'd almost say this is like a church of barbecue here. I mean, it is a church of barbecue. It is a church of barbecue because when you come here, you get some good barbecue and learn too about the Bible. Everybody been lying to you in the Bible. They lie to you. They mislead you. They told you they will go at child. Which we all go at children, don't get me wrong. But what they forgot, if you walk this earth and breathe this air, you have to have a mother and father. See what can't happen no more in this world? What can't happen no more is that you, somebody tell you that they're pregnant by God. That's a hard one. You get that right hard. And can't none of your kids tell you at 14 years old and come home and tell you and your wife that she's pregnant by God. You ain't going to believe it. But see what everybody don't realize? Mary ain't never told nobody she's pregnant by God. Who said it? The grandma. The grandma said it. Well, so the last thing I ask everyone on the show before we go is uh you know what's your message to the people you know there's people listening that are cooking in their backyard there's people that are running businesses there's people that are trying to keep their barbecue joint open for 40 years like you have uh what's your message to the the enthusiasts the people who really love barbecue like you we got stay stay doing stay doing professing and always cook with love and long you cook with love people gonna start loving your food they're gonna come visit you because you got love now Loves the, the love secret ingredient. Love the secret ingredient of cooking. 
And is that like something you wake up with or something like? When you wake up with you go sleep with it. As long as you wake up with it and go sleep with it, you're doing good. It's probably hard to be sad in this in this building. It's hard. You can't be sad. Sad put you behind, make you slow, make you be behind. We don't do it. We're always happy. When you come to that door, you got to be happy. We friendly with everybody. Everybody friendly up here. Everybody get along up here. If you need some, I help you out. If you shout on money, I help you out. Gentrification, new people, everything. Everyone's right. friends. If you ain't got no money, if you shout so much, I help you out. Just come back next time, pay it. Two or three dollars, yeah, I help you out. Some was, people ain't got enough change for the taxes. I help you out. I take care of it. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna say I forgot my wallet today. Right. I say they bring it back tomorrow. Because I know you come every day. So if I know you come once a year, don't never forget your wallet. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? If you come once a year, you forget your wallet, shame on you. But but if you're a regular, you, you it's easy. Right. It's easy. And you got a lot of regulars. And you got a whole lot of regulars. Anybody else, out They all yeah. found. Sometimes yeah. I only come through here. They, ain't, they got money, not enough money. I give them, I look out for them. Family by love Family and blood. Family by love and blood. By love and blood. We planted by love and blood up here. Well, Brian, thank you. Appreciate it. was awesome. It. Now you've been on the show. Y'all be careful. Y'all come see me at Sound Barbecue now. Yeah. And if you ain't got no dentures, come on down anyway. <laughs> Appreciate y'all. Don't love need you. no teeth. You don't need no TV that beef down here at Sound Barbecue. <laughs> Y'all see me eat Y'all come now. on down here. Here on the meat man. Y'all to see Thanks, me eat now. Right, you, yeah. I got jaws like a bad trap, a teeth like a razor. I made tag tongue with a sensitive taste. I was born out in Texas, called the land of beef. Yeah. Never yeah. catch yeah. 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 a muscle green or showing a hell of like a meat in the meat man. Y'all to see me all that stuff. Everything. Educated. She's very nice. That's why she with me. Yeah. What a husband. Your baby, my baby. That's my great grandbaby. I don't even know how you keep track of all these people. I don't know their name. I just call them different names. <laughs> I call them all grandbaby, great grandbaby. Y'all know who I'm talking to. Come on. <laughs> you know, I got four six grandkids. I got four six grandkids. I got uh, 12 great great grand 12 great grandkids. Too easy, man. It's too easy. You got it all figured out. Well, you got to be doing right, though. Yeah. So if you're doing right, you can handle it. I can't even I came in here worried about stuff. I can't even remember what I was worried about. <laughs> you don't need no problem. Why do you have a problem anyway? I, I have no idea. 